Welcome to The Joy Factor. Now, here's your host, therapist, life coach, and yoga teacher, Julie Hansen. Hello, and welcome to The Joy Factor podcast. My guest today is Cheryl Rice. Cheryl works with women eager to be leaders in their own lives. Since 1990, she has been working with clients to improve individual, team, and executive performance. In her powerful seminars, Cheryl inspires women to use their voice and vision for maximum impact. She's also the author of the inspiring memoir, Where Have I Been All My Life? A Journey Toward Love and Wholeness. Additionally, her essays on life, love, and loss have appeared in local and national publications, including the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Chicago Tribune, Cure Today, and Maria Shriver's blog, Architects of Change. In 2016, Cheryl founded the You Matter Marathon, No Running Required, a global initiative that creates positive connections between individuals and within communities. Welcome to the Joy Factor Podcast, Cheryl. It's so good to have you here. Thank you, Julie. It's my privilege to be with you today. Oh, I'm so happy. Well, let's just start off. Why don't you tell us what the term Joy Factor means to you personally? Certainly. To me, Joy Factor means consciously making choices to prioritize the people, the places, and the practices, the daily practices that bring me joy. And I've learned that that's something that I have to be really committed to. It's not something I can do once and then think I've nailed it. It really is a point of view and an action, actually, that I take when I'm conscious about it on a daily basis. So the joy factor is recognizing and valuing that joy is an essential element to a fulfilled life. That's wonderful. And, you know, that is that sense of consciously making those choices and, you know, that coupling the priority with the commitment, I'm guessing, you know, allowed you to found the You Matter Marathon. And why don't you tell us just what led you down the path? Tell us about what that is. And then what led you down the path to founding uh, the You Matter Marathon? I'd be delighted to, Julie. So this was back in 2016. A colleague of mine gave me a card, the size of a business card, and it only had the words, you matter on it. And I was so moved. I literally felt like I had been hugged in my heart. It really was powerful for me to receive that message. And I was so moved that I ordered my own box of cards and started sharing them. And at first I was kind of meek and just gave them to people I knew or people in my community. And every time I did, I would see people really light up and appreciate the gesture and the message. And one day I was standing behind a woman in the grocery store checkout line. And I heard her tell the cashier she was really suffering. She said her husband just lost his job and her son was sick. And it was in the holiday season. She said, I don't know how I'm going to make it through the holidays. And my heart ached. You know, we've all been in these situations where we We want to do something and we're not sure what to do. And frankly, I kind of froze and I didn't do anything until we were both in the parking lot returning our carts at the same time. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to be brave. And I went up to her and I said, you know, I couldn't help but over here. You're going through a really hard time right now. I'm so sorry. I'd like you to have this. And I gave her a You Matter card and she started to cry. And she said, you have no idea what this means to me. And she asked if we could hug. I went back to my car, Julie, and I was weeping because I felt such a profound connection just in giving her this message. And it was then that I knew, and I knew that I wanted other people to feel this too. And I didn't want to be the only one going out there giving out cards. I wanted to invite other people. So that's when the seeds of something bigger was was founded, Julie. And then I decided that if we were going to really do this, wouldn't it be cool if we could get 10,000 cards out in the month of November. And I wanted to connect that with Thanksgiving, which at least in the States is a month where gratitude is more on our radar. And I thought, well, I will send 30 cards for free to everybody who signs up 
at our website, youmattermarathon.com. And that way they can give out one card a day during November. And my original goal was to see if we could get 10,000 cards out into the world in November of 2016. And lo and behold, we blew through that. And we ended up in, I think, 14 countries that first year, every state. And my belief in this message has only grown. And now we're in 91 countries. And certainly every state, we've given out collectively millions of cards. And the magic that has come from this simple yet powerful gesture, it just joyful times a thousand. Wonderful. So, yeah, I mean, I was looking at the core beliefs that are listed on your website and I I was I couldn't decide which one to kind of, you know, focus on, but I wondered if I could just have you sort of touch on this one. We believe that the world would be a more peaceful and joyful place if every person knew they mattered. So powerful. What I will say is I believe that in all my heart, Julie, that so much of the suffering that is in the world right now at both an individual and an interpersonal and, and societal level comes from a place of insecurity about whether or not we matter. And we know that certainly the pandemic has accentuated feelings of alienation and marginalization, again, in individuals and groups of people and people question, even if it's not conscious, I think, do I matter? Do other people care if I come to work? Do other people care? Do I make a difference? And I think we all intrinsically want to believe that we matter. And unfortunately, it's really hard for many of us to affirm that for ourselves. And that's a piece of it. And I teach women all the time the some of the tools and techniques to affirm our own sense of mattering. And I believe whether it's affirming that for ourselves or reminding other people that so many problems of the world will be softened, if not eliminated, if every human being knew that they mattered. And I say very, very specifically about peaceful and joyful because I believe peace comes when people feel they don't matter and they have to go out and prove it and they have to harm themselves or other people. And that's kind of violence stems from a deep and inherent belief that I don't matter or someone else doesn't matter and no good can come from that. And joyful, because this question I like to ask in my workshops is, what would you do if you knew in your bones that you did matter? And that's where we can really tap into our joy. Wouldn't it be something if each of us were acting every day from a place of certainty in our own significance and then affirmed that in others just as a matter of course? And I believe we would be unleashing epic amounts of joy in the world. Epic amounts of joy. Yes. And when you ask that question, just curious if you've got any anecdotal, anything ever, anyone ever say to you in response to that question that really has stuck with you or that you've been able to kind of see them manifest? Absolutely. That you mean the question about what would you do if you knew that you mattered? Yeah, absolutely. Well, everything from I would leave this relationship to I would go for that pilot's license, to I would open that bake shop, or I would run that half marathon. We would just go for it and live from a place of values and act upon our values, not just our hopes um, and certainly not our fears. So I think it's what we would actually do differently. And for some people, it's, it's a little more around stop beating myself up so much. If I knew that I mattered, I wouldn't have to be on a first name basis with my inner critic. Yeah, the um, well, and the interesting thing about that, too, I think, is that you know, everybody needs this card. Everybody on some level needs that validation. And that's part of our survival, right? We can't survive alone. And I, I think that there's so much emphasis on kind of pulling yourselves up by your bootstrap or don't show weakness, push through, get through the day. And this you matter business is kind of like, who has time for this? You know, like the mentality that our society sort of puts toward emotional intelligence or, you know, practices that would really focus more on joy and more on peace and less on competition and less on winning. And so these little cards to me are very powerful visual cues that, you know, just can have a a remarkable impact. 
And I, I think about on communities, on neighborhoods, on states. What are some of the stories you've heard from people who have received the cards? Yes. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm happy to tell you some stories. And before I, I do, I just want to go back to what you said about the impact. We know that that there was a time, Julie, where we didn't need to give out you matter cards, where people really understood that we were interdependent. We needed each other for our survival. And something's gotten lost in our very individualistic world now. And I think these cards are reminders. And it's not just the message. I am such a fan of the action of, of sharing this card with other people, because then what happens is you get a twofer. It's not just that you're affirming the significance of the other, you're simultaneously affirming your own significance. And that's certainly been true in my life. And I know many of the people who participate now year after year tell me that they feel better about themselves. They feel more human. They feel more sense of gratitude and connection. So this is a way, a pathway towards mattering. And that the truth is there is no you and there is no me. There's we and we are interconnected. And this action kind of affirms that. So as far as stories, oh my gosh, I could spend the rest of the, the show on stories. And one of the favorite parts of this for me and what keeps me going is receiving the stories from people who participate either in our Facebook group and that's You Matter Marathon on Facebook. And we have Instagram and Twitter, of course, um, or people send them to me through the website, through my email. So the stories are as much a spark of joy as is giving the cards. And we share the stories out with the entire community for that reason, because as you know, kindness is contagious and we want to continue to inspire people to keep making this, as I call a happy habit of giving the cards every year. So a couple stories just to, to be brief. One woman told me about her son who was a young adult and she was estranged from him. And he was recently released from prison. And she wasn't quite sure how she was going to reestablish a connection with him. And so on their first meeting, the first thing she did is she gave him a You Matter card. And he started to tear up. And then he, she said he looked at the card for about an entire minute before asking if she had extra cards so he could give them to the men in the halfway house he was living with. And she said she really believed that that moment of her affirming his mattering, despite all the the issues that perhaps led him to be in prison was the gateway to a renewed relationship. So that's one story that sticks with me deeply. Another story is of a woman. It was actually after the holidays. I was in a line at a store. People were returning all their gifts from the holidays. And this woman behind the counter was handling it like such a pro. She wasn't getting flustered. She was being so polite. And when I got up to the counter, I handed her a card and she literally put one hand over her mouth and one hand on her heart and her tears just welled up. And there wasn't time to ask her what it meant to her. So I just said, you know, what the card says is true. Well, the next day, Julie, I was so curious about her, the power of her reaction. I went back to the store to see if I could find her. And I did. And I asked her what was going on for her. And she said that she was going through a really hard time and that, in fact, she um, asked if I had more cards because she wanted to give one to her manager who gave her money for food when she ran out at the end of the month. And I just thought, you know, you never know. You just never know what somebody is going through. So those are two stories, and I'm happy to share more, but those are two that are so very vivid for me about just the power, both giving cards to people we're very close with and how resonant that message can be in giving a card to somebody you know, a quote unquote stranger, whatever that means, how powerful that can be. So powerful, just a simple exchange. And, you know, I, I can't wait to get my cards. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, how am I going to do this? I think I ordered 150 of your cards. And, you know, I'm, I, I already am like, all right, am I going to contact businesses and see if a business will leave some? Am I going to hand them out, you know, kind of randomly? It's fun to think about. It's fun to plan and anticipate putting that out there into my community, my exactly. world. Exactly. And there's, I say, there's no wrong way to share a card. Some people are timid about giving them to strangers. And I say, no, no problem. You know, give them to people that you interact with regularly, like the people at your dry cleaners or who makes your latte in the morning. Or if you want, you can sprinkle a few in anonymous places like the ATM machine 
or one of my favorites is when I fill out my tank with gas, I leave a card in the card holder for the next person to see the credit card Aww. holder, you matter card or returning a library book. Just put one in the back of the library book for the next person to find. So there's infinite ways to do it. Um, certainly my, my kind of preference is that you mix in the personal connections just because you're also going to get so much joy from that yourself. But mix it up and experiment. You can't be wrong. Yeah, I'm really hoping that we can, I can do my little part to help you spread, you know, the mission here, because it really, when I, when I learned about you, I just thought, all right, that is somebody I want to talk to. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I did. Oh, me too. There's no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. A product that works wonders for curls might make straight hair limp and greasy. My hair tends to be on the frizzy side, but my ideal hair routine is simple and minimal. Thanks to my personalized pros routine, I have an easy and convenient way to keep my hair looking smooth and beautiful every time I style it. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personal. Using natural ingredients with proven results, Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. First, Pros starts by asking about you as a person with their in depth consultation. Pros asked me really unexpected things like whether I was currently pregnant or experiencing menopause. I learned that major hormonal events can affect hair's growth and shedding cycle. But with pros, I can build a strong foundation for my hair no matter what stage of life I'm in. After I submitted my answers, pros analyzed my responses and determined products that match my needs to give me a custom routine. Now that I've been using the products for a while, I can go back and review and refine. This extra feature is a nice touch that helps me tailor my pros hair care formula as my needs evolve over time. As a carbon neutral certified B Corp. Pros is an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty-free. It's also important to me that Pros is committed to creating an internal culture where everyone has a seat at the table through a broader range of representation on every level of their workforce, especially at the top. If you're not 100% positive, Pros is the best hair care you've had, they will take the products back, no questions asked. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash joy. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash joy for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. So how has your work helped you create more joy in your life? I'm so blessed because I get to work professionally with women every day who want to be braver in their lives, whether they're leaders in organizations or women going through personal transition. It is absolutely joyful for me to accompany a woman on a journey towards change and towards fulfilling her own potential. So that is probably my favorite thing or one of the top favorite things in my life that brings me joy. And then certainly, as we've been talking about, these random acts of kindness that now for me are primarily through the You Matter card give me great joy and make me feel a sense of purpose and aliveness. And, you know, there's so much, Julie, that some we can't control. And there's so many things in the world that it, we can feel, I can feel impotent at times to know how to make better. And when I'm having those days, I just dive in right to the things that I know are dependable joys. And for me, kindness is top of the list. Keep doing something for someone, even if I don't have a card, holding the door for them, smiling, looking them in the eye. I mean, it doesn't take more than that. So we don't have to be Melinda Gates to make a difference. We can be who we are and show up with the intention of acknowledging other human beings and trying to lighten the load for other people. And again, it's a twofer. It makes changes them, but sometimes even more importantly, we can't control how other people respond. I mean, I've had people, as you said, like notice with the cards, like some people will tear up and some people get very, very, have a strong reaction and other people, it's a more modest reaction. 
And I don't take that personally either. I'm like, okay, it, I still feel better about myself for having shared it. So the bottom line for me, the, my work, it's a privilege to do what I do, to connect with people who want to grow is a joy for me. And then to be initiating sharing these new matter cards is also a primary source of joy for me right now. Well, and, you know, looking at anything that we do that leaves us feeling better about ourselves is going to connect to, you know, that interdependence. And it isn't just people that are going to be impacted when, you know, we're able to kind of stop and notice and remember that we matter. But I think that when someone believes that they matter, or they're told that they matter, they treat other living beings better, right? So whether right. it's pets, whether it's our environment, our, our planet, um, it really does have that ripple effect. Once we start feeling connected to another person, we have a better sense of interconnectedness. And that it isn't just us out there. That's right. But there, there's something bigger than that. Yes, and that we belong. We all have a place. Every human being on the planet is here to, and makes a difference because they're a human being, period. I don't have to like or agree with everybody, but they matter. Every person, even people with significant differences from myself, I still honor their humanness. And that's really important. This is not a popularity contest. It's truly just affirming the significance of the other. And one thing to say, just to, because people can't see this visual, is the You Matter card is a white business card, the size of a business card. And it says You Matter in black letters. It's as simple as possible. And part of that is because we don't feel like the message needs any adornment. And nothing is on the back of the card. And I can't tell you how many marketing people have said you should put your website on the back. And I won't because as soon as I put anything on the back, even in a, that way, it becomes a promotional item. And that's the opposite of what I want to do. And so many times, Julie, people, you'll, you'll experience this yourself when you get the cards. You give a card to a person, the first thing they do is turn it over. They don't even know they've done it. They're looking for the cat. And so what I say, there is no catch. And once they get that, then they can relax and really appreciate the impact of the message. It's a powerful message. Do you have a quote or any advice from anyone that has inspired or taught you more about living joyfully, more about really living, you know, this full uh, vision of your own life? Yeah. Mary Oliver has a poem called Don't Hesitate. And in it, she has a line that says, joy is not meant to be a crumb. And it's it's a short poem. I'm happy to read it or I can skip that part. It's up to you, Julie. Um, oh, I think you should read it. Okay. I love so, Mary Oliver. Oh, she's the best. So she says, if you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything. Very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Hmm. Beautiful. That is a beautiful poem. I'm looking out my window as we're talking and there's a tree that's got like just the perfect little branch that's perfect autumn colors. The rest of it's still green. And it, even those little bits of nature where you can find something that just is so amazing if you really look at it. And to me, that is a, that's what it reminds me of. Mary Oliver writes so much about nature and, you know, her poems are beautiful. We love Mary Oliver. I won't go on and on, but okay. Anything you would add on how our listeners can apply that poem to their own lives? Yes. Uh, I'll share an activity I give often to coaching clients when it's appropriate. And I, I give them this invitation to create what I call a dependable joy list, where I ask them to try to get to 100 things in life that bring them joy. And they usually look at me like I'm crazy. And I, and so it, they have a week or two to work on it. And invariably, they come back and they have this gorgeous list of, as you were just alluding to, some of the, the smallest, sweetest pleasures, whether it's 
the first sip of coffee, the way their child looks in their crib, a note of a song, and on and on and on it goes. And these are dependable joys that they know they can rely on to give them a sense of pleasure and meaning in life. And I will invariably ask them how many of them cost money and very few of them do. And then we talk about how they can keep that list in a place that's very near and dear to them and refer to it on days when we're, our joy is a little bit obscured for whatever reason. And just go to our dependable joy list. And I would say that that never fails to empower because, again, we all forget from time to time and we all need to be reminded. Yes, and nothing, not a fancy joy list, not a complicated joy list, but just a dependable list. I like that. Yes, dependable joys. That's wonderful. So what about those moments when you're struggling with your own joy? Can you tell us what steals your joy and how you get it back? Sure. I would say maybe some of your community members can listen or, excuse me, relate to this. What steals my joy sometimes is too much attention to the news. And I start to feel overwhelmed or helpless or angry. Cruelty, cruelty steals my joy. So those are two big ones that I wrestle with on a daily basis. And how I get it back is monitoring how much news I'm, I'm watching and social media goes with that too. And be real conscious and trying to, to stop and take breaks from both. And then on the affirmative side, it is taking actions aligned with my values calling a friend. I'll tell you another go-to strategy I, I have. Um, it's going to sound simple and maybe silly, but for me, it works. I walk every day and I pick up trash on my walks and it gives me a sense of agency and empowerment every day that I can, again, create the world that I want to live in, or at least be a co-creator of it. So I can't say it's joyful every moment I'm picking up trash, but it does give me a sense of pride in myself as a human being. And that that can be joyful. And certainly, as you noted, just looking at nature every morning is a huge gift. And I walk pretty early. So I'm, I have the gift of seeing the night turn into dawn. And uh, that's pretty spectacular every day to be reminded of hope. And now, you know, <laughs> because of the pandemic, there's so many people who have taken up walking. So there's a regular group of people that I see with their dogs. And that's the community unto itself. That brings me joy are these these community connections. Again, they can be very small. Um, Barbara Fredrickson, she's a psychologist. She talks about these micro moments of positivity resonance, just small interactions with people every day. That brings me joy. Um, and those are things that I can cultivate and all of us can consciously cultivate when we're feeling a little bit dampened in terms of the joy that's flowing through us. Well, and that, you know, that example of picking up the trash, I think, you know, it's a great way to create more space in your mind for joy, because not picking up the trash or complaining about it or feeling resentful, you know, there's a lot of ways you could go when you see trash lying around every day on your walk that really could have a negative impact and make it, you know, kind of a constriction. But what you're talking about is really an expansive way to work with what is. And, you know, this is, there's trash on the ground. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to work to make a, the world that I want to be living in. And that is, uh, that's how you do it one step at a time. So that's a, a great example. Do you have any other daily practices that you believe contribute to your success? You've mentioned several, but is there anything else that you feel really helps you to feel successful in that path of aligning your values with your actions? I do meditate. It's just 10 to 12 minutes a day. Um, I use an app that there's so many out there, so I won't even recommend one because people can easily find them. I recommend many, like just find one <laughs> if you're not comfortable doing it on your own. It's very simple breathing practice and that centers me. So after the walk, after I feed the dog, I sit down and I meditate for 10 to 12 minutes. And again, it's the regularity. And I think you used a lovely term, Julie, about just like opening. And I think that opens me up and centers me. And then on a more practical level, I am i can't do anything without a to-do list. So it helps me if I know it's written down, that frees me up to be available to joy because I'm not thinking I'm going to forget something. So I'm a big to-do list writer, which is, um, and I do it just on my 
on post-it notes everywhere, but it works for me. Well, and you know, you're mentioning this concept of like a to-do list, however you do it is really about being conscious of time, you know, and that's one of the other, the other pieces, right? Like if we know what time it is, if we're aware of how long it takes to do these other things, not only does that make our lives more smooth, but it also, I think, taps you more into the present moment. Very well said. Right. And the, the more we're in the present moment, the better our capacity to practice joy. And, um, that's just my two cents, but I like what you're saying about, you know, there's a few things and some of this is just practical, you know, having a to-do list, taking even just a few minutes to meditate can have such a profound impact on our ability to manage our stress and uh, get to the joy. Yes. And giving ourselves permission, you know, to be quite honest, I didn't always give myself permission. And for a lot of people and sometimes women, struggle with permission to feel joy. We're so groomed to to do, to be human, you know, doings instead of human beings that get to really experience joy, which does require kind of a suspension of that monkey mind and being in the moment, as you so rightly noted. So I think it's also giving myself permission that joy matters and it's not optional, that it matters to my well-being. And I would even assert my longevity and certainly the quality of my life. So it is something as a mindset to be reminded of for some of us. Some people do it really, really well naturally. I'm not one of those people, to be quite honest. I have to be reminded to prioritize joy. I really do. Me too. (laughs) Me too. And every day we have to be reminded. But joy matters. You know, you're really doing some work that helps people remember that they matter. And when we believe that we matter... We're able to take that next little step forward toward whatever the vision of our lives that maybe we're not even aware of, but to feel that hopefulness and to feel that connection, those are the ingredients that I think we need to be just spreading as far and wide as we can, not just right now, but, you know, always. So how can our listeners find you and and support the work you're doing? Thanks for asking, Julie. If they want to participate in sharing You Matter cards, it's quite simple. Go to youmattermarathon.com. Again, no running required, just (laughs) youmattermarathon.com. Sign up and we'll send you 30 cards for free. You can also sign up as a group, such as a church or synagogue or mosque or school or any organization, frankly. We'll st- still send you 30 cards for free and tell you how you can print or purchase all the cards you need for your organization. If you're interested in me and the work I do as a leadership coach and speaker, that's Cheryl Rice Leadership, three words, Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, Rice, or I-C-E, leadership.com. And I'm very accessible. And also you can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook. I hope all of your listeners will take the leap, get these free cards, 30 free cards, and start creating joy with them. And then tell me about it because that's joyful for me. And talking to you, Julie, is joyful for me. And you're so kind to share your platform for this message. I'm so grateful. Well, it's been a a pleasure. And I would just say, you know, not only is handing the card part of the joy, but to me, talking about it, telling people what you did, you know, sharing that part too. I'm sure we are going to connect with listeners who are looking for something to do, who've been waiting for some, you know, message, but also, you know, need something that isn't too complicated. So I hope that, um, I hope we can stay in touch and let you know kind of what happens. I'm definitely going to let you know what happens with my cards. Please. Definitely will. Thank you so much for coming on the Joy Factor today, Cheryl. It's been a pleasure. It's been mine, Julie. Thank you so much. You matter. You matter too. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Joy Factor. For more information, visit www.thejoyfactorpodcast.com.